Hi, this is Eric Smith. Time to do another quick look video, and I thought I would do it from Le Leviticus 16, verses 8 through 10, and the Word of God reads this way. Then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord, and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat on which the Lord's lot fell, and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and to let it go as the scapegoat into the wilderness. In chapter 16 of Leviticus, you see what the high priest needs to do on the day of atonement. And part of what he had to do had to do with two goats. One goat was going to be used for one thing and then the other goat's going to be used for something else. But both goats actually point to the finished work of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And we'll see that in a moment. Verse 8 reads again, Then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord, and the other lot for the scapegoat. So what Aaron was to do as the high priest is to cast lots. Now, if you've read Proverbs 16.33, you know that every decision of the lot is still of the Lord. So it's not luck, chance, or fate. God still controlled that in his providence and sovereignty. Verse 9. And Aaron shall bring the goat on which the Lord, Lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering. So the lot that went on the goat would be a sin offering. It would be, it would be a substitutionary um, offering for the people's sins. So they would take that goat and then they would kill it, offer it, and sprinkle the blood. But then verse 10 goes, But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat, shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and let it go as the scapegoat into the wilderness. Now you notice the word scapegoat. We use that today and usually when we use the word scapegoat, that's someone that's taking um, the blame for something. They're going to take the responsibility for, for everything. Even if other people were involved, this particular person would be the scapegoat. He would, um, he would take the blame he would take even the punishment. Well, scapegoat here means removal of sin. This goat represents the removal of the people's sin. That's why it was presented alive before the Lord. It wasn't going to be killed. It was going to make an atonement. And then they would take the scapegoat and let it go into the wilderness. Dear Christian, when we read the Old Testament about the Day of the Atonement and what the high priest had to do. This all pictured and looked forward to Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection on the cross. Jesus Christ was the sin offering, but at the same time, our sins were what? Removed from us. Now, I know today we still, in our sanctification, struggle with sin, but eventually that sin is going to be removed. In our progressive sanctification, we're being made into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one day when we die, we are going to be glorified and we're going to have no more sin. And that's what Jesus Christ does. He dies for our sins and then he removes those sins as far as what? The east to the west. In these Old Testament verses, and this Old Testament example of the Day of, of Atonement, actually points forward to the ultimate absolute atonement in Jesus Christ. So this is Leviticus chapter 16 verses 8 through 10. I just wanted to do a quick look to remind you, Christian, that the atoning work of God can be seen even in the Old Testament. It's a foreshadow and a picture of what Jesus Christ would do in the New Testament. And the people that really believed in this in faith looked forward to Jesus Christ in the future. They knew that this was a foreshadowing and it was a wonderful thing. Today, as Christians, we can look back at what Jesus Christ did and know that our sins have been atoned for and they have been removed and eventually we'll see that removal in glory. As always, if the videos on this channel have encouraged your Christian walk and edified you in any way whatsoever, but you have not subscribed to my channel yet and you want to, hit the button. If you want to leave any comments, please do so, but please don't be snarky. Please do not be profane. We want to be Christ-like in everything we say and do as Christians. And until we do another quick look, please, please, please remember what the Lord has done for you. Please remember that he has atoned for your sins. 
that he's removed your sins, that you're forgiven of your sins and sin no longer reigns as you go through your sanctification. And one day you will be sinless in that glorified body as you spend eternity with the Lord. The Old Testament verses pointed to that reality and we can rejoice in these verses as well as what Jesus Christ did in the New Testament. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and God bless.